In 2007, one of the most ghoulish superheroes exploded out of the comic book pages and onto the big screen with a blaze of fire in Ghost Rider. Starring the ever kooky and awesome Nicolas Cage as Johnny Blaze, a stunt motorbike performer who once sold his soul to the evil demon Mephistopheles. However, when Mephistopheles' son, the evil Blackheart, arrives on Earth intent on finding three fallen angels so he can descend the world into chaos and destruction, Johnny Blaze makes a deal with Mephistopheles to become Ghost Rider in order to stop Blackheart and to reclaim his soul, where he becomes a fiery hell beast with a flaming skull who sets out to destroy evil, while looking pretty badass while doing it. In this fun and exciting but often overlooked action movie, which splices together the horror and superhero genres, creating an enjoyable popcorn movie. So it's time to go back 16 years ago to 2007 and explore 10 things that you didn't know about Ghost Rider. Wow, was 2007 really 16 years ago? What the actual? So let's all enjoy Nicolas Cage's strange mannerisms as we check it out. That's right. Number 10. Who is Ghost Rider? Ghost Rider is a Marvel superhero who first made his appearance in the fifth issue of Marvel Spotlight Comics in 1972. He was the creation of comic book writer Roy Thomas, who also wrote for other Marvel comics including X-Men and The Avengers, as well as fellow comic book writer Gary Friedrich, whom had written several horror-themed comics for Marvel including The Monster of Frankenstein, and finally comic book artist Michael Plug, whom also helped with the creation of Man-Thing and Werewolf by Night. Now this is where things get a little tricky, as Ghost Rider is somewhat based on a pre-existing Marvel character also called Ghost Rider, in a comic series published in 1967. And unlike the Ghost Rider that we all know, whose standout feature was a flaming skull, this early prototype featured a cowboy wearing a ghost costume in a western setting, with the Ghost Rider's true identity being Carter Slade. Now the Ghost Rider, whom we will all come to know and love, told the story of motorcycle stuntman Johnny Blaze, who makes a deal with the Dark Lord Mephisto to give his soul in order to save his father's life. This soul-crushing deal sees Blaze transform into the Hell Beast Ghost Rider, where his skull gets temporarily engulfed in flames, where he uses his newfound supernatural abilities to defeat evil, with this new spectral character being something of a terrifying anti-hero. At the time of Ghost Rider's creation, horror-themed comics were popular with Marvel. Also popular at that time was stunt performer Evil Knievel, who would often perform death-defying stunts to a live audience. So the creation of Ghost Rider felt like a fusing of Marvel's horror comics and Evil Knievel. The character proved so popular, he would go on to get his own comic series in 1973, and would become a well-established character in the lineup of Marvel superheroes. And from 1983 onwards, other characters would take on the Ghost Rider mantle, with the story going beyond the Johnny Blaze character. I can remember that during the 90s, there was a sudden surge in popularity of the Ghost Rider character. I can remember that thanks to his flaming skull head, he looked so dangerous and badass, which led us to the number 9 slot. Number 9. A Ghost Rider movie went into production as far back as the early 90s. Marvel had been trying to get a Ghost Rider movie off the ground as early as 1992, with the company trying to pitch a movie to several production companies and movie producers. Despite Marvel now being a cinematic juggernaut, back in the late 80s and early 90s, the company wasn't having the best of luck when it came to adapting their characters onto the big screen. First, there was the George Lucas-produced Howard the Duck, which was a massive flop. Then a failed Spider-Man movie, which was to be produced by Canon Films, but didn't end up happening. A Punisher and Captain America movies, which were considered so poor 
they mainly skipped theatres, becoming straight-to-video releases. And then, of course, the infamous Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie, which was made but ultimately never released, and was solely made in order for a production company to keep the rights to the Fantastic Four brand. However, things started to take off in 1997, when Gail Ann Hurd, who previously produced the first two Terminator movies, came on board to produce a Ghost Rider movie, with a script that was being developed by Jonathan Hensley, whom had previously written the scripts for Jumanji and Die Hard with a Vengeance, two very successful movies. But despite the massive talent on board, this early production went nowhere and fizzled out. Number 8. Then we nearly got a Ghost Rider who had scissors for hands. The Ghost Rider project then started to pick up traction once again in the year 2000, thanks to the success of the Blade movie, which was another horror-based Marvel superhero, with the movie coming out in 1998, which proved very successful. So clearly there was now a market for horror-themed superhero movies. The project was now being handled by Dimension Films, and writer David Goyer and director Stephen Norrington were brought on board to work on Ghost Rider, as they had both written and directed the Blade movie. And when it came to casting the role of Johnny Blaze and his hellfire alter ego Ghost Rider, the two filmmakers wanted none other than Johnny Depp in the role, and he was supposedly enthusiastic and up for starring in the part. But sadly, just like the previous attempt, this production collapsed, and we never got to see that Ghost Rider movie which featured Johnny Depp. Number 7. Nicolas Cage was in, and then he was out. So despite the previous production collapsing, Blade director Stephen Norrington still stayed on board, attempting to try and get a Ghost Rider movie off the ground. Nicolas Cage, who already had a dash with the world of superheroes thanks to being cast as Superman in the ill-fated, never-to-be-made Superman Lives project, was a massive fan of the Ghost Rider comics. In fact, I think I remember seeing an interview with him talking about his love of the Ghost Rider comic books, where he said that's how he learned to read. When Cage found out about a Ghost Rider movie being in the works, he contacted Norrington and expressed his interest for being cast in the role. Now, supposedly at one stage, Eric Banner was being sought after for the part, but he chose the Incredible Hulk instead, and so Norrington cast Nicolas Cage in the role of Ghost Rider. However, this is where the waters get mudded, as Norrington eventually lost interest in Ghost Rider thanks to all the delays in production. So he went on to work on a movie called Tick Tock, which was to be an action thriller starring Jennifer Lopez as an FBI agent who has to stop bombs going off around the city in shopping malls. So naturally, Nicolas Cage also grew disinterested in the Ghost Rider production, and so he left to star as John Constantine in the DC adaptation of Hellblazer. However, Alan Moore, who created Hellblazer, was not happy with this casting choice, as he wanted Sting in the role. That production would go for its own issues, where Keanu Reeves ended up being cast in the role, where the Hellblazer movie was now called Constantine. And incidentally, Norrington's TikTok movie didn't end up getting made, as 9-11 then happened. And I'm guessing it was felt that people wouldn't want to see a movie about terrorism and bombs. But he would go on to direct the movie League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which was, <laughs> once again, a story based off the works of Alan Moore. Ay 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 ay, it's hard keeping up with all this swapping and changing. Meanwhile, for the time being, it seemed that Ghost Rider's production was truly dead and buried. Number 6. Spider-Man got the production back on track. So in 2002, Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movie was released, and was a massive success for Columbia Pictures, with Spider-Man becoming the highest grossing movie of 2002, even beating Star Wars. So naturally, Columbia now had an interest in developing more Marvel superhero characters. So they bought the Ghost Riders production off Dimension Films, and brought in Mark Steven Johnson as the new director as he had previously directed the Daredevil movie. He also wrote the two Grumpy Old Men films and Jack Frost, you know, just throwing it out there. As Nicolas Cage was already tied to the project, Johnson was happy to recast him for the role of Ghost Rider. Shane Salerno was hired to make rewrites to the script. Salerno had previously written Armageddon, and more recently, the Avatar sequels. However, director Johnson himself would make his own rewrites to the script. Production of Ghost Rider was to take place in 2003, with a 2004 release. Incidentally, the same year, Columbia Pictures also made that really bizarre Punisher movie which starred John Travolta. 
However, the production was hit with even more setbacks, as Nicolas Cage took time off to film the movie The Weatherman. And then after that, even more setbacks took place due to issues with the script. Man, this production just couldn't catch a break! From 1992 to 2004, the production of Ghost Rider was in a never-ending battle of setbacks and delays, until finally in 2005, the ball really started to get rolling for bringing Ghost Rider onto the big screen. Number 5. The Ghost Rider movie was to feature a different villain. So as mentioned, during the early production, there was lots of changes being made to the script and one of them was the movie's main villain. In the final film, the main villain we see is Blackheart, who wants to destroy the world and turn it into a hellish landscape. The character was created in 1989, where he appeared in Daredevil 270, where although he started off as a villain to both Daredevil and Spider-Man, he would go on to become a frequent villain to Ghost Rider, where we discover that he's the son of the evil Lord Mephisto, and was created out of pure evil energy, who wants to overthrow his father. However, in the original script, the villain was to be Scarecrow, a character who first appeared in the 51st edition of Tales of Suspense, all the way back in 1964. The character started off as a former carnival performer turned criminal, who commits burglaries while wearing a Scarecrow costume. But he would later become undead, complete with supernatural powers. However, during the production of the Ghost Rider movie, it was decided to change villains, as it was felt the character was too similar to the DC Comics villain of the same name, The Scarecrow. And yes, when you look at them side by side, they even look very similar to each other. And what didn't help is also around about that time, Batman Begins came out, which also featured the DC Scarecrow. So the Marvel Scarecrow was out, and Blackheart was in. Nicolas Cage himself would also take creative liberties. He wanted to give the character of Johnny Blaze lots of depth and for him to be relatable, unlike the original script where Johnny Blaze was a hard drinking and smoking badass. But rather, he wanted Blaze to be someone who's chosen stunt riding as a way to feel connected with his father and to try and escape from the deal that he made with the devil. So with Cage in the role, other important actors were cast, including the delicious Eva Mendes as Roxanne Simpson, a news reporter and Johnny Blaze's childhood sweetheart, who comes back into his life. Mendes was supposedly nervous about playing the part, as she felt that she didn't look like the comic book character, but she still went with it and gave an enjoyable performance. Wes Bentley was cast as the main villain Blackheart, who does give a really eerie and haunting performance, along with Sam Elliott as Carter Slade, an old ghost rider who was known as the Phantom Rider, who actually acts as a mentor to Johnny Blaze, making him an Obi-Wan Kenobi of Ghost Rider, and his character was based on the original Western version of Ghost Rider. And finally, Peter Fonda played Mephistopheles, and it's said that he was cast in the role due to starring in the motorcycle classic Easy Rider. But there are other claims that Nicolas Cage himself recommended Fonda. Number 4. Ghost Rider was filmed in my home city. So when it came to filming, Ghost Rider was filmed in Australia, namely at the Melbourne Dockland Studio, with the movie mainly being shot in and around Melbourne, Victoria. And I can remember when this movie was being shot and it was kind of a big deal, as not many big Hollywood movies were being filmed in Melbourne, especially superhero ones. Usually if a movie was being filmed in Australia, most of the time the filming would take place at Fox Studios in Sydney. So a big production starring Nicolas Cage was a big deal here, and it got everyone excited. I really got a kick out of watching the movie for the first time and seeing recognisable Melbourne landscapes in the film. The fact that Ghost Rider was filmed in Australia led to several Australian actors in minor roles, most notably a cameo with a very young Rebel Wilson, who at the time was starring in an Australian comedy sketch show called The Wedge. In addition to that, the Australian alternative rock band Spiderbait provided a really rocking rendition of Ghost Riders in the Sky for the movie, which is played in the end credits. The filming took place from February to June 2005, and it was planned to release Ghost Rider in 2006. <laughs> but you'll never guess what happened. There were even more delays. Yeah, big shock, right? Seriously, this movie seems to be the epicenter of delays. Before release, it was decided that reshoots were needed. So to film certain new scenes and alternative scenes, the crew went to film scenes at Vancouver, Canada. 
There needs to be more movies filmed in Melbourne because we are living in a material city and I am a material minty. Whatever that means. Number three, the special effects of Ghost Rider. Now, remember how Nicolas Cage said that he was a massive fan of Ghost Rider? Well, it seems that he wasn't kidding, as in real life, Nicolas Cage actually has a tattoo of Ghost Rider on his arm. Now, it'll make no sense if in the movie, if Ghost Rider had a tattoo of himself. Otherwise, the movie's universe would probably implode. So when it came to filming, Cage's Ghost Rider tattoo would have to be covered up with makeup. When it came to filming Johnny Blaze's stunts in the movie, the scenes were filmed at the Dockland Stadium in Melbourne, which incidentally is now known as Marvel Stadium. And director Mark Steven Johnson originally wanted to film the stunts in front of a live audience, but instead it was decided to use a CGI audience. The special effects for Ghost Rider were provided by Sony Pictures Image Works, whom incidentally also did the special effects for Spider-Man 2 a few years prior. And the special effects were very important to the movie, as Ghost Rider's iconic image is that of a character who has a flaming skull. So it would have had to have been convincing in order for the movie to work. Now, although I do think that it does look very CGI-ish, I honestly don't mind, as to me, this is a case where CGI was required. What else are you gonna do? Actually light Nicolas Cage's head on fire? I mean, come on. And there's just something about seeing the iconography of Ghost Rider on his Hell motorcycle on film, which just looks absolutely beautiful and captures some great imagery. And I feel like you can pause the movie at any moment that Ghost Rider is shown on the screen and print it out as a picture to hang on your wall. I think the mid to late 2000s was the only time that Ghost Rider could have been created for a live action movie thanks to CGI. I just don't know how the effect could have been pulled off in the 80s or 90s. So to me, this is one of those rare occasions where CGI works and is necessary. Funny enough, there are a lot of scenes where Nicolas Cage was playing the character in his Ghost Rider form where he had his face painted, which would be replaced with a CGI skull, which honestly looks hilarious and just seems like a real Nicolas Cage thing. I honestly want to see a cut of Ghost Rider where the CGI hasn't been added and it's just Nicolas Cage roaming around with his face painted, pulling off many crazy Nicolas Cage faces. So they may have gotten the look of Ghost Rider, but what about the sound? Well, Ghost Rider's voice was created by Dane Davis, who previously won an Academy Award for his sound work on The Matrix. And look, I'm not good at explaining the technicalities, but what he did was take Nicolas Cage's recorded lines and add animal growls and reverse the sound and add different frequencies. Uh, yeah, look, Ghost Rider's voice. Look into my eyes. Your soul is stained by the blood of the innocent. And in addition to that, Ghost Rider's skull is designed after real life scans of Nicolas Cage's skull. Wow, that's a lot of skulls in one sentence. Number two, the director himself paid for one of the action scenes. One thing is for sure, Ghost Rider has some pretty kick-ass action set pieces and stunt work. However, according to IMDB, one scene in particular proved to be a bit of a struggle to get made. That's a scene where we see Ghost Rider go up against a helicopter. It seems that Columbia Pictures wasn't too keen to film that scene and didn't want to fork out the expenses required to shoot it. But director Mark Steven Johnson wanted a Ghost Rider vs. Helicopter scene and damn it, he was going to get a Ghost Rider vs. Helicopter scene. So he forked out the necessary cash from his own pocket in order to get the scene filmed. In fact, filming that scene created even more delays in filming. So yeah, Johnson really wanted to see Ghost Rider take on a helicopter. Although the filmmakers got the okay from Columbia Pictures for this addition to the movie, there was another planned edit that Columbia Pictures had to put their foot down and say no. And that's the Columbia Pictures logo at the start. Now the idea was to have the torch lady in the logo at the start of the movie morph into her own version of a fiery Ghost Rider demon. Which, let's be honest, would have been freaking awesome. I mean, come on, that would have been great. But Columbia Pictures fought otherwise and told the production that they couldn't add this onto their logo. So that idea was dropped. Also, Ghost Rider is one of very few Marvel movies that didn't feature a Stan Lee cameo. Which is a bit of a shame because let's face it, who doesn't love a good Stan Lee cameo? Number one. 
Ghost Rider on the highway to the box office. Ghost Rider's production may have taken a painstaking 15 years, but finally, it was released in February 2007. Financially speaking, it did fairly well in the box office. It made nearly $229 million on a $110 million budget. Although I can't help but wonder if the movie could have made more money if they went with a different poster. If you look at the poster, it looks like a generic action movie starring Nicolas Cage and the ever-gorgeous Eva Mendes. And I think the image of Ghost Rider is so iconic, that should have been the main vocal point in the marketing. But instead, they shrunk the character down and tucked him at the bottom of the poster. Almost as if it was felt the Ghost Rider character wouldn't be much of a selling point, so instead they decided to promote Cage and Mendez. Without a hint of irony that most people going to see the movie would have been Ghost Rider fans. The movie was met with not the best reviews from critics, with Ghost Rider being described as a disappointment and never living to its full potential. And for such a dark and edgy character as Ghost Rider, the movie felt tame and conventional, lacking a true rebel spirit. The New York Times found it more funny than frightening. So who knows, maybe the movie would have fared better if it went more balls to the wall and went for an R rating. Actually, that also would have been awesome. Ghost Rider was nominated for a Razzie Award for Worst Actor for Nicolas Cage, and IGN ranked the movie at number 7 in a list of 10 worst comic book movies of the 2000s. However, there was some praise. Although the Chicago Times found the movie to be a clumsy, lifeless outing, it did praise the special effects, and Ghost Rider was nominated for Best Horror Film at the Saturn Awards. But I found that not too long after the movie came out, it pretty much became forgotten with the passing of time. It represents an era when Marvel was trying to get a foothold in the cinematic domain, where different movie studios were trying to make Marvel movies, and the genre just hadn't quite discovered itself yet, until several years later when we got the MCU. Although, in recent years, I have found that people have started to talk more about the Ghost Rider movie, and it has developed something of a cult status. Now, is it a brilliant cinematic masterpiece? No, it isn't. But it is an enjoyable popcorn movie. I can remember seeing it when it came out and I found it enjoyable enough and I didn't think it deserved all the hate that it got. And let's be honest, it's still better than a lot of modern superhero movies that are coming out today. Essentially, Ghost Rider is a badass character who rides a motorbike with a fiery skull. And that's exactly what you get. You are delivered exactly what's promised. But I guess from a movie perspective, some people wanted more. And I think something that has helped garner Ghost Rider more appreciation in modern times is the recent resurgence of popularity with Nicolas Cage. Yeah, the guy acts like he's insane at times, but you can't deny that he goes all out with Ghost Rider and that he is fully invested and engulfed in the part and is also having the time of his life. And that passion and enthusiasm is infectious. At the end of the day, Ghost Rider is a fun movie. It has great action, great special effects, an interesting horror twist in the superhero genre, and Nicolas Cage in all his Nicolas Cage-ness. So I say, check it out. Don't go in expecting a masterpiece or a cinematic experience that's going to change your life or your worldview or anything like that, but rather just look at it as being like a fun popcorn movie to watch on a Sunday afternoon. Anyway, I'm Minty, and seriously, release the Nicolas Cage face-painted cut. Let's ride. See ya!